want to introduce just a couple of quick concepts and then I'll do some things uh, under the camera for you for examples. This is dealing with GCO A1 and uh, really this is kind of a, a bridge of the old algebra into the new geometry. So over in the world of algebra uh, you should have become fairly comfortable with things called functions. And functions come in lots of different looks. Uh, sometimes they they look like this. Uh, a function could look like uh, this. Uh, sometimes functions are not written in function notation, but just uh, in this kind of a form. And what we learned in the algebra world is that uh, we can plug in values and solve for values and so on. Uh, for instance, uh, if I plug in a value of 1 here, if I input a value of 1, I would do 1 squared plus 2 equals 3. The input here, input, and here is our output. Now generally in the world of algebra this is known as x uh, is the independent and y as the dependent. So I put in a 1, out came a 3. Now this can be done backwards too. Uh, you can put in the output uh, and solve the other way. So for instance, uh, it is possible to say, uh, let's try this one here. Let's say y equals, uh, I don't know, uh, 9. And so we know the answer, but we want to know x. In other words, we have the output, but we want the input. So to do this, we sub in our answer or our value for y and we work backwards. So we move this over, we get 12, 2x, x equals 6. So in this case, the output or the y value was a 9, but the input value was a 6. This is the world of algebra, and you've done plenty of that in Algebra 1. Um, and maybe one more thing I would think have you think about. Sometimes we teach what we call a input-output machine or a function machine. Uh, they sometimes, I don't know what they look like, they could look like different things. But the idea is we put an input in and we get some sort of output. So maybe I put in a 3, in goes a 3, chug, 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 chug. and out comes, let's do a 6, comes out. Bing! Out comes the 6. So we say, well, I don't know what that means. Uh, let's put in a 5. Bing, bing, bing. Out comes a 8. Oh, interesting. 5, out comes an 8. Uh, we're looking for a pattern. We want to know what the function is that's doing this. Let's do it one more time. Let's put in uh, 10. In goes a 10. Bing. Out comes a 13. And we say to ourselves, well, what would be the function? Ah, each time we're adding 3. So to whatever the input was, we would add 3. This would be the answer to our function machine. Now, why do we do this? Why do we go back to this? Well, first of all, we're always in the business of bridging old to new. You should be comfortable with functions and input and output. What we want you to be able to feel comfortable with is now in geometry working with something we call a geometry rule or a coordinate rule. They look something like this. Um, here is a coordinate rule. A coordinate rule T takes all points x comma y, adds 2 to the x and 3 to the y. So if you put in the point 0 and 5, 0 plus 2 is 2, and 5 and 3 make 8. This is known as the pre-image, and this is known as the image, the thing that is created. Pre-image, the thing that comes first, the original, and then pre-image follows. Uh, let's do another rule here. Let's do G where it says, um, let's do uh, 3 times X and minus Y. 
here is another coordinate rule. And so if I plug in the point negative 1 and 8, I will get negative 3, oh, negative 1 and 8, yes, so I'll get negative 3 and negative 8. Pre-image and image. This is just like the function world where we can put things in one and then work our way forwards or backwards. Let me just quickly do uh, working backwards for you. So let's say they gave us a prime, the image of uh, 5 and 4. Now a prime is the way we denote the image of something. It's A's image. So we want to go backwards to find out what was the original point here, uh, A, what was the original A value back here to give us that result working backwards. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just strictly do these things backwards or you can say that that thing equaled this. So I need to subtract 2, x must have been 3. So it was 3 here because when it went this way, it added 2 to get 5. And here we can say y plus 3 came out to be a 4, and so we get a 1. So the original point A must have been 3 and 1 to give us this. We'll look at a couple more underneath the uh, document camera now. Let's do a couple quick examples under the document camera here, just to give you a sense of what they might look like there on the actual worksheet. It says find the value of the function f of x, 2x squared plus x, when x equals 4. Note that this is actually your input, right, because it's giving you the x value. So you can write that as the function evaluated at 4 would be 2 times 4x squared plus 4. A great habit to get into, of course, is entering values with brackets. And as we continue, this is 2 times 16 plus 4, this is 32, plus 4, or 36. So when our input was 4, our output was 36. Input and our output. This is the typical and simple way. Um, this, though, is the one that usually catches students. This says what's the value of x, the input. We want to know what the input was. That's what we're finding when our function uh, is equal to negative 29. So actually, this isn't our x value. It's the function's value at that time. So we would write negative 29 equals 8x minus 5. We would add 5 to both sides. Minus 24 equals 8x. And x equals negative 3. Ah, when negative 3 is our input, we would get negative 29 as our output. This again is review of algebra. Why do they bring that up here? It's because they want you to learn uh, input and output in the geometric world. So an input is our pre-image, our output is our image. And the rules look kind of like this. This is rule M. It uh, triples uh, the x value and subtracts 1, and this one multiplies the y value by 5. So if we have a at 3 and 2, if we triple, well, we could do it slow here, 3 times minus 1, 5 times 2, a prime, in other words, the image would be 9 minus 1, 8, and 5 times 2, 4, 10. This would be the image of A, pre-image, and its image. Here's, uh, let's see, oh good, a, a counter, uh, a reverse example. It says determine the pre-image. Ah, so this C prime is the image of C, but they want us to find C. So in other words, the answer came out to this. So you could say, hey, 5x plus 3 came out to be 13. So let's find out what the x value must have been. So we get 5x equals 10, x equals 2. And what would have uh, this been? 7y equals negative 7, y equals negative 1. That means that C, the pre-image, was 2 
and negative 1. Because if I place that in, let's try it. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Just like that. All right, good luck.